What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode, a classic episode of the Touchdown with Doug Smith. If you love NFL draft content, you are at the right place because, folks, I have the all time sack leader from Northern Arizona University, NAU. His name's Eloy Quete, and I have him on the show with us right now. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Eloy, how are you today, man? I'm doing good, man. Uh, thank you for having me on the show. Yes, sir, dude. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule, man. And and congrats on all your success in your college career, man. Thank you so much, man. That was quite an introduction. I think it's a honor and a privilege to be here with you. Man, thank you, brother. I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Um, man, today we just want to talk a little bit about your career, uh, what you have coming up in, in the coming months leading up to the draft. Uh, and then if you don't mind, take us from the beginning. When did you first fall in love with the game of football? Actually, um, I'm originally uh, from Congo. That's where I was born. But I was a refugee in Zimbabwe. And then we, my parents uh, got an opportunity to come to America. And then I came to America in 2016. But I used to be a rugby player. I used to be really good at rugby. And then uh, our high school coach was like, hey, Eloy, uh, you, you might actually like football. You might end up you know, really loving football. Come give it a try. Yeah. And then I went to the field. And the first time I put the pads on, man, I fell in love with the sport. And uh, after then, uh, since then, it's been like up since like, you know, <clears throat> since I put the pads on, I've never looked back since. Dude, that is beautiful. And that's an amazing story, man. So I had read somewhere online that uh, originally you were playing rugby. Is that true? Oh, yeah, definitely. I was a great rugby player. But then, you know, I had to transition from rugby to football. And, uh, you know, I, the, the sports that kind of simulate in terms of like the tackling and, you know, like uh, the aggression of the game and the agility it takes and how physically demanding it is. You know, there's aspects that are similar to each other. And with rugby, it's crazy, man. <laughs> there's not that much pads there. You know, you have the little thing on the head and I mean, you got people's ears getting ripped off, man. And it's it's pretty intense, man. <laughs> it's like oh, you yeah. chose the right sport. <laughs> <laughs> rugby is right up the alley with football yeah they're first cousins pretty much and stuff so i i remember getting asked to play in college and i was like man i'm, I'm stick with football it's my bag over here so <laughs> Very cool. now, did, you, did you always play d-line uh i was the middle linebacker at first when i uh, was in high oh. school and okay then, and, but i also was an athlete i used to play running back fullback everything i used to play all line D line because you know my school had uh we didn't have that much uh people on our team when I was playing in my high school. So, you know, uh I was kind of like a guy whenever the team needs me, I'll be there. And I used to play D line because I was just quicker and then I could pressure which is better than anybody. And then I was just like, Okay, coach will put me just in situ any situation to make the team win or like, you know, to make the team better. So yeah. Wow, man, that is that is really cool, man. And I'm actually looking at some stats online. And it says here in 20 varsity games in his career, Eloy, six foot one, 250 is back in high school, said you had 223 tackles, 135 solo, eight sacks, four fumble recoveries. My goodness. So you really went head over heels in love with football, man. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, you know, fell in love with football. That was, you know, it's, it's still one of my favorite things to do in life. That's awesome, man. Were there any players that maybe some of your favorite players growing up? Well, in terms of football, yes, yes, I've always uh, watched Aaron Donald. Um, that's like one of the players that you know. When I was playing, also like kind of like three tag, and you know, I kind of try to model my game against him, just the model that he plays with and and the passion. But then you know, when I start becoming more like a pass rush, you, you look at guys like T.J. Watt, and then you look like guys like you know Miles Crosby and. And all those guys that, you know, Von Miller, they, they just, you know, you just want to look look up to them and, you know, one day you want to play on Sundays and pressure, you know, and be able to share that field with them. Uh, those are the type of guys I look up to, yeah. That's cool, man. That is cool. And they're great guys. And a lot of people say, oh, I'll model my game after this person. But you actually model your game after these guys, which is really cool, man. Uh, awesome. Thank you. Yes, sir. With the draft coming up, I mean, we're, I think, just shy of four months away from the NFL 2024 NFL draft. I mean, wow, you blink two times and 2023 is over. Uh, what are some of your plans in the coming months to get ready for the draft? 
Uh, I'm actually training up here uh, in Sewanee, in Atlanta. Okay. And uh, I've been, you know, the summer I do my uh, preparation and my pro day preparation and everything. And then I'll probably go back to my uh, university and uh, NAU and then do uh, my pro day there. And then after that, see uh, what teams are interested in me. And then after that, we'll go from there. You know. That is awesome, man. And one one thing I remember about Flagstaff is the elevation is very high. Is it like six or seven thousand? Uh, it's seven thousand, yeah. Man, that's tough, man. That's that's where the that's where the real dogs go to go to train at. <laughs> and that elevation is not joke in Flagstaff. That yeah. one is no joke. But also, it's very easy to get used to it. Yeah, after absolutely. I was telling my wife we're planning a trip out there sometime, hopefully next year. And yeah, I stay hydrated and you'll probably have a nosebleed the first week, but it's okay, you'll make it past it. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. And he's uh you know, it's a pretty it's a it's a nice place, honestly. It's, it's been it's been awesome to me. You know, everybody there at the university has been great to me. So yeah, it's a great place. That's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, when did you, uh, what was your aha moment where you realized like, man, I'm not your average football player. I have real skill, real talent, real heart for the game. What was your aha moment where you realized that this could potentially be a, be, I could potentially go pro one day. I think it's a sense of like deep belief. Like you, I go on the field, mm-hmm. my coach told me, See ball, go get ball. I was middle linebacker. See ball, go get ball. I was flying around my first game. I was flying around the practice, making plays, and and and, and, and making all these, you know, you know, chest down, talking people all over, and they just loving it. And uh, I'll see other kids around me, like you know, kids will complain and and all that, and I'm like, dude, you get to play football and you're complaining. Yeah, and, you know. I mean, in high school level, I had accolades like all state, big school, like, you know, first team, all state, and, and then all that. Mm-hmm. Just getting those accolades, it's like, I haven't even reached my potential yet, you know, and then I was like, huh, I could take this up a notch. And then I was like, okay, this is this is where it's going. This is what, what I'm going to do for a living. Yeah. That's why I made that decision. The first time playing football, I made that decision, man. Dude, that is beautiful. I love it, man. Did did you have any nicknames growing up uh, playing football? Uh, they call me Big E. Big E. Okay, yeah. I can see that. Hence the name Eloy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they Very call cool. me Big E. Yeah. Very cool, man. Well, what's in the headphones uh, on, on uh, you know come, come Sundays? I, I heard you had a highlight playing online. I heard some Burner Boy on there, man. So, oh my God, Burner Boy, man, that's like one of my favorite artists, man. I love listening to him. Yeah. Yeah. A burner boy is one of my favorites too. Uh, you know, Spotify at the end of the year, uh, mm-hmm. which I think it came out probably two weeks ago. It shows your recap for 2023 yeah. and burner boy was right at the top. Uh, <laughs> I think, uh, common person. Uh, I'm a common person. That song. Okay. That's, dude, I love that's that song. It. Yeah. Th- 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 that's my happy song. It's <laughs> <laughs> a happy song. Now burner boy used to get me in the mood for the game, man. And you know, and, and then just this last season has been awesome. It's been amazing. And, you know, and the song just fit it, fit it perfect. You know what? I needed to get the message out there. Like, you know, I got to go, go out with the banger, my college career. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's how we did, man. That's amazing, man. And uh, bringing back to your college career, man, you're the all-time sack leader for NAU, Northern Arizona University. That's amazing. Did, did I see correctly? Twenty four sacks. Were my eyes playing tricks on me? Uh, yeah, twenty four sacks. Yeah, and uh, I think I finished the season with more, but I don't recall. I don't remember yet because I didn't keep track. Honestly, I just yeah. wanted to play football and have fun. Dude, that's awesome, man. You know, it's crazy. I, I've met a lot of people on this show. I think you might be interview number 78, and I've been interviewing draft prospects uh, since Rondale Moore from the Cardinals since his rookie year when I had him wow. on the show. And uh, I meet some guy, not Rondell Moore. He's passionate for sure. But I meet some people and they're like, they crush it and they're just not, man, their heart ain't in it. You could almost see it. And now that they've been in the league for a few years, uh, you just kind of like, ah, you know, they're, you tell that they're just, they're kind of worn down because the business side of it is, is, is really frustrating, you know? Yeah. But man, you have like, one thing I love about you, man, and your heart is that 
you know, you have like this almost like childlike love for football. And it almost brings me back to when I was a little boy, man. And I, I just want to say I appreciate that about you, man. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, you've yes. got to love football. you got to love what you do for a living. And and I just understand, you know, it's a privilege. And not a lot of people get to say they play football at a high level. And not a lot of people get to, you know, like live the experience of an athlete, be disciplined, wake up early in the morning. I think you know, it takes a special person to do that, and you know, and I feel privileged to be able to be put in that position to be given those opportunities to 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 do that. Yes, sir. If you don't mind me asking, so what motivates you in life? The burning desire to compete and to live a life that I enjoy, and then I think I enjoy football. And then, but there's like other external uh, things that motivates me, like family. You know, like you know, being being given the talent by God to to do what I do and that everything every day putting in work is just goes back to show God like hey God thank you for the talent thank you for the opportunity that you give me this body I'll continue to work hard and and and, and, then you know for you to be proud of the person I'm becoming you know yeah so yeah my family absolutely definitely pushes me my faith definitely plays a very key factor in what motivates me to play football and then I think football, you can make a lot of impact, you know, people listen, you know, I do believe like people listen like to football players or athletes in general, just because they're just naturally born leaders, you know, they, yeah. you know, they take the crowd with them. And once you're a football player, especially at the NFL level, you get to, a lot of kids look up to you, just like how I look up to other athletes, you know, a lot of yeah. kids look up to you and they listen to you. So you just want to be a positive person, a really good person, a role model that leads by example uh, for all these kids. And, you know, I think that's the person I see myself as. So That's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, w- once you're selected by an NFL team and uh, you really get your feet planted on a squad, uh, what would you say, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of football players, you said it yourself, they're very uh, philanthropic, you know, a lot of philanthropy, excuse me. And, they love giving back to the community, whether it's bicycle give it, giveaways or building water wells or education. Are, are there any things that are close to your heart that you would love to give back to the community? Oh, yeah, definitely. I think uh, I'll give definitely to, you know, under underserved communities because I came from a high school that, you know, we didn't really get much. It was an inner city school. But also on the large scale, also I'll be very much involved in, with refugees because I myself, I'm a refugee. And, uh, you know, my parents play war and stuff in Congo. But, I, I, you know, I do believe that once, you know, I get there, one of the things that is close to me, to my heart, is, is uh, refugee, helping refugees across the world, yeah. Dude, and that's any things like, you know, food, hunger, and, and then all those stuff, you know. But refugees, definitely. And, and do you have a favorite defensive scheme that you like to play in? Oh, no, I've played... Three, four, four, three. I've played all. I don't have a favorite one. You know, I'm an athlete overall. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome, man. That's awesome. And as we wrap up the interview, what's something you want NFL teams to know about you that they may not know already about you? One of my desires really is to have my name written again in the NFL books. I want to play for a long time. And I know dudes say, oh, they want to play football for a long time, be a Hall of Famer, but. I truly want to do this. Like I've done it at a college level where I'll possibly go in our school hall of fame, but I want to do it again on the, on a bigger scale. And that's like, you know, one of the next, next levels that I've written in the back of, you know, my book and be like, Hey, this is my ultimate goal to be, you know, to be remembered, to impact the game, to change the game. You know what I mean? To be named among these people that, you know, that celebrated for, you know, for doing the job at a high level. So that's one of the things that I think it will be important for NFL teams to know that I'm somebody that is, you know, that that I want to achieve that goal, you know. Yeah, dude, I love it, man. And, and from high school, you know, you played running back, linebacker, D-line. You were all over the place. I mean, well over 200 it, 20 games, you know, well over 200 tackles. That's amazing. And then you go over to NAU, you crush it. I mean, you again, you say yourself, you'll be in that school's Hall of Fame. Like you're one of the great, you're you are the greatest defensive player to ever come from that school, man. So, uh, man, that motor, that drive, that pushes you in life, man. Uh, man, God has a plan for you, man. And 
whew, big things are coming your way, my brother. For real, man. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I appreciate you, man. You know, thank you also for having for giving me the opportunity to be here, man. I think it's it's huge and you know, just as helping us guys from small schools to get that exposure, yeah. I think it's definitely a blessing. And, uh, I, you know, I want to salute you for the great work that you're doing. Man, that means the world to me, dude. I, I appreciate it, man. I love doing it, man. I love meeting wonderful people like you and uh, just using my platform for good. And, you know, as uh, shout out to ESPN and NFL Network, they're dope. They're going to cover the LSUs and and there's great guys from those schools. But let's keep it real. There's UDFAs. And day three draft picks who are going to outplay people who are top ten picks. Oh yeah, definitely. We see that almost every single year. <laughs> every year, yeah, every season, and, every year. Yeah. So, so there has to be the the the, the Eloy Equetes. Like there has to be a spotlight, man. So uh, that's the point of the touchdown with Doug Smith. And I cover like random news stories, kind of boutique style. Um, but man, come December, as soon as college football season starts to wrap up, I'm like, all right, draft content from now till April. <laughs> no, definitely. <laughs> Appreciate you, man. Uh, man, thank you so much again for coming on the show. You're an absolute ball of joy, and I'm excited, man. I, I feel inspired just taking and talking to you, man. Um, hopefully, this ain't the last time you come on the show. Uh, but man, if you don't mind me asking, man, uh, any shout outs you may have before we wrap up? Oh, hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. You know, my family, my, my coaches back, back at my school, and, you know, you guys have been awesome. And, you know, I really thank you guys, and you guys are the reason why I'm here. That's dope, man. That's awesome, man. Well, Eloy, thank you so much. And ladies and gentlemen, please comment below at the bottom of this video. Let me know how this interview made you feel. Also in the description of this video, I'm gonna have all social media stuff down below so you can give him a follow and most importantly, get inspired, man. This guy's going places, man. And I'm really, really excited. And he just might play for your favorite NFL team. So comment below and I'll see you guys next time. Eloy, thank you so much. Turn 100 for the touchdown, King Crown, gain inside, leading your town, hit you faster than the sound, bad boy, throw it down, hey. yeah, I'm ill, not my will, don't cop a fill, fill the house, listen to the world crowd, drop a like, calm it down, Heisman, all the haters mouth, superhero, hit them wow, packing more action than bing, boom, bam, pow, touchdown for the win, we live, subscribe right now. Thanks for watching another episode of the Touchdown with Doug Smith, where I cover all 32 NFL teams plus NFL exclusive interviews. Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell for the alerts, comment below, and we'll catch you next time on the Touchdown with Doug Smith.